It is now 632. I am calling the meeting to order for the September 18th Redevelopment Commission meeting. If staff will please take a roll call. Tyler Hudgens. Present. Brian Hamilton. Here. Bo Bigable. Here. Tyler Jones. Here. Peter Shaka. Present. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. Having a quorum, we will go ahead and move on with our communications from citizens. At this time, members of the public may comment on matters not on the agenda. The commission's response is limited to responding to criticism, asking staff to review a matter commented upon, or asking that a matter be put on a future agenda. Do we have any comments or communications from citizens at this time not on the agenda? Mr. Chairman, I have not received any requests to speak on items not on the agenda. Having none, we will move into our administrative items and consider um, uh, approval of the meeting minutes from our August 21st, 2019 meeting. Do I have any edits from the commission on those meeting minutes? Seeing none, do I have uh, a motion to approve? I motion to approve the meeting minutes for August 21st, uh, 21st 2019. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Having a second, those in favor of approving the August 20, uh, 21st, 2019 meeting minutes, say aye. 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 Uh, seeing none opposed, uh, this passes unanimously. At this time, we will uh, move into the public hearing. I now open the public hearing. Items will be heard at one public hearing, at which time anyone wishing to comment on a public hearing item may do so. Comments will be heard from those in support of or in opposition to an item. In order to comment on a public hearing item, you must fill out a public comment form indicating the item number on which you wish to be heard. Once the hearing is closed, there will be no further public comment unless requested by a member of the commission. After the public hearing, the commission may act on all items not requiring additional staff, public, or commission comment with a single vote. Staff, if you'll please move forward for item 2Z1904 LDC text amendment, heritage assigned plans. Uh, good evening, members of the commission. My name is Sydney Bethel. I'm with the planning division. Uh, the request before you tonight is to recommend approval on Z19-04, um, a request to amend the land development code relating to the addition of a new type of rooftop sign in certain locations within the Heritage Village Center Zoning District. To provide some background on the history of what has previously been heard with this item, on April 3rd, 2019, it was originally initiated by the planning commission. On April 17th, it was heard by the Redevelopment Commission, and you provided comment and input and recommended postponement of the um, proposed text amendment until the Heritage um, Design Guidelines update was implemented. Um, on May 1st, it went to the Planning Commission because it was scheduled for that after. Um, they then continued it, and then it was continued on September 4th as well so that we could bring um, the new text amendment with the additions to it uh, forth to you prior to approval um, from the Planning Commission. Uh, to provide some context on the uh, proposed update, the LDC currently does not permit rooftop signage, um, and most other cities' research do not permit new rooftop signs to be erected. The ones that are presently existing in most municipalities are either um, historic signs or are copies of historic signs that have been um, erected. Um, there are some certain cities that do permit rooftop signage, and through that we have taken some of their elements from their code and incorporated that into our proposed text amendment. Um, we will go into the code in the next couple slides, but um, as I previously mentioned, this is only permitted within the Heritage District. We believe that the Heritage District is the most appropriate location for this type of signage due to the signage that's already existing with the projecting neon signs that are very popular down there. Um, and that this will add to the unique um, sense of place that is already fostered within the area. Uh, for the next couple slides, I'm gonna provide an overview of some of the major points of the text amendment. First, having to do with the location of where these signs will be permitted. So they will only be permitted within the um, Heritage District, specifically within the HVC uh, zoning district. So showing this map over here, the red outline. Oh, I apologize. The 
mouse is not working on here. Um, so you're gonna see a red outline on the screen, so that is our parameters of the Heritage District. Uh, the green outline through the center shows the areas in which the signage will be permitted. So these signs will only be permitted on buildings three stories above ground um, and taller fronting uh, Gilbert Road. There will only be one sign permitted along Gilbert Road per bounded area. There are three bounded areas that have been selected um, within the downtown. So you'll see area one is gonna be to the north, um, and this is bounded by uh, Juniper Avenue uh, to the north and then by the canal to the south. Um, the second area, which is labeled central, is uh, bounded by the canal to the north and then the railroad um, tracks to the south, and the third area is bounded by the railroad tracks to the north and then by Elliott Road to the south. So this will only allow a total of three signs to be um, erected within the Heritage District. Um, in those specific locations, only one per location. So previously you saw this as a separation requirement, so this is a modification from uh, the last presentation. Uh, moving on to content, this was a large discussion in the last presentation. Um, we cannot restrict the content within the sign, so the actual words in there. Um, the sign would be considered a non-commercial sign um, as it would not promote a particular business service or product. So therefore it is not gonna advertise a business that is down there, it will be a non-commercial message and that is something that we can implement for the signage. Um, in regards to the sign, uh, the size, height, and design, um, the area of the sign must not exceed 200 square feet. Um, it must not, must not extend more than 15 feet above the roof line. Uh, it has to be located two feet back from the roof line and the copy must be mounted as stylized individual letters and graphics. Uh, the lighting will be required to be exposed neon, decorative bulbs, or tubing. This is very similar to what is required in our projecting signs now. Um, and it will be, the lighting is required to comply with Arizona Revised Statutes and the Town of Gilbert Municipal Code relating to lighting. And it also must comply with the existing um, design guidelines relating to lighting. Um, after your recommendation, this will be brought forth to the Planning Commission with your formal recommendation. After that, with Planning Commission's recommendations and yours, it will go to Town Council, and that's where final approval or denial will um, take place. And staff is recommending approval um, to the Planning Commission for Z19-04, and I'm here for further questions. Thank you, staff. Um, are there any questions or comments? Um, now would be the time from our commissioners. I just have one question about the, the non-commercial aspect of the signs, and if we need town attorney assistance here, I, I would appreciate Well, non-commercial, I assume, non-commercial means can't support a business, I understand that. Could it say Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, a product? Is that still commercial, or how does that? And then I guess my second one, if, if I'll tag it on, is that, what about political stuff? What Could it say abortion is murder? Could it say, I mean, is, would, would that be allowed as well, or, or no? Uh, Vice Chair Hamlet, that's a great question. I'm not sure. Let me look at the political question, and I can get back to you on that. I'll do a little bit of research. And then as far as the Coca-Cola sign, um, that's another question. I'm not sure. It's non-commercial. The intent is that they don't advertise their own business. I'm not sure if it's whether they can advertise another business or another product as well. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I apologize. No, that's okay. I'll, I'll look that up, and I'll get back to you. Maybe yep. to take a step back, I guess, help me understand why we would not be able to approve what actually goes on the signage. Why do we need to just put it into the wording and go from there and let somebody take it from there? Um, so I'm going to direct this to legal just the, to give him the full explanation on the protection of the speech. I can give a brief one, but you may be able to give a more insightful um, history into our signage and protected speech in Gilbert. So could you repeat the question again? Yes, the, the question is why, if this is gonna be such an iconic sign, why wouldn't this specific request come back to us or whatever the, the, the right venue would be for that approval? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't like the idea of just saying that, you know, as long as it's non-commercial, not related to a specific business, that this would be approved somehow. So I'm just trying to understand why we wouldn't have the chance to see exactly what's going to go on top of a building and okay. approve it. So uh, because of 
the recent Supreme Court case is the one, especially that Gilbert was involved in, we cannot regulate the content of the message. And so we can set guidelines, we can say it can be non-commercial, but we can't actually go to what, we can't regulate what it's saying. So if they want to come in and say, Gilbert is great, uh, that's not something that we can, we can say, yeah, we like that, or we want you to say Gilbert is really great. We can't, we can't get into those type of details. Can I ask a second question? Yeah. Is, is I guess uh, there must be some background here, right? This didn't just come out of the blue. This was brought forward through the Planning Commission. And so, is there any way you can give us some kind of a context about why we're even seeing this? I don't understand what the what the urgency is of this uh, matter. Uh, Commissioner Jones, I just briefly do want to go back to your um, second part of your question. Um, that Mr. Payne answered. Uh, this will come forth to the Redevelopment Commission when um, the sign is submitted. So the Redevelopment Commission will have the ultimate approval on the signage. It will be part of a um, Heritage District uh, sign package. So you will be able to see it and look at the design and all of those elements, and that is included in our code. So it will be brought before you. It won't just get approved by staff. Um, and to answer your second question uh, for it, this was originally brought forward through a downtown business interest who was interested in pursuing this. Um, so it was initiated to look for forth um, through staff. So we have explored the option, and that's why we have brought it forth um, since there has been some interest in the downtown for it. So that is where it originally has come from um, and why it has been brought forth. Other questions? Yeah, I got two. Um, going along with what uh, Tyler was saying, um, so I know there's one candidate and there's three sections these signs can be placed. Is it first come, first serve for the other two? Like, how does that work? And then my next question is, do these signs expire? Do they have, hey, this is 10 years, then the permit's up, they renew it, or somebody else gets it, or is it first come, first serve, these signs are there, they're there forever? Uh, Commissioner Biglow, I'd have to double check with the ex exact expiration date with it. Typically with our submittals, they have a three-year expiration date, so I'm going to have to verify the exact um, element for that. Um, but to answer your first question having to do with first come, first serve in these districts when the signage comes in, yes, um, once a sign does go there, then technically that district will be exempt from another sign coming in um, until the other sign would be dismantled and taken away. So it would limit um, another business owner in the same district from pursuing the signage once um, someone else has erected it. Okay. And then one, uh, perfect, thank you for, for following up with that and clarifying. Um, also about, I know you mentioned that the signs would come before us because as the Redevelopment Commission, we're looking at the design and making sure it fits and ties into downtown and everything. There's no other way around it as far as, hey, this is sign one, two, and three. They have to come before redevelopment. We have to look at it and discuss what we like or don't like or what we think about it as opposed to just like, you know, we don't want it to happen and then, you know, signs just to start popping up and you know what I mean just kind of clash or have something that doesn't really flow with everything just because there are a lot of people here in the neighborhood that are concerned about it and so we just want to make sure that it's you know that if it's going to happen that it's something that's really great and is really going to help the overall aesthetic for the heritage district. Uh, Commissioner Biglow, it would be a pro public process when it does come in so there will be the ability for public comment um, when it does. I may be un misunderstanding the question where you're asking if all three could be reviewed at the same time, that that's in a manner we do it to make sure that it was a cohesive submittal. Yeah, yeah, or just every three years or whenever it expires, mm -hmm. not that somebody gets in with the sign that everybody likes and then three years later they can swap it out with whatever they want. Just kind of making sure that it's, it kind of protects the Heritage District more than anything, you know, and, and the, the people who live down there. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Hudges, just a just a note, Commissioners, that um, while you can't regulate the content of the sign, the design you absolutely can, and that's what will be coming before the commission. For any sign or any change to any sign, would have to come back to the commission to look at the design. Mr. Shaka. Well, through the chair, a couple questions for staff. Uh, you've identified three bounded areas. I was just wondering how you chose those bounded areas. And the other question is, uh, though we're reaching um, build out, you know, the skyline could change. Uh, the developer could come, come in and buy a building and, and, and build it higher. So if there's only two signs that are out there, um, you know, could there be additional, uh, that third signs built as a new development it happens or 
could there ever be a po possibility of more bounded areas? Um, Commissioner Shaka, so for what we're bringing forward, we are looking at doing these specific areas. Possibly in the future, things could be brought forward as an amendment. Uh, so that's not something that's out of the realm of possibility. That's not our intent with this, what we're bringing forward to you. Our intent is to keep it too limited to three to avoid uh, competition and cluttering and some concerns that residents have and that the commission has had as well. So that technically is a possibility that it could get amended in the future, but with this middle, we're not looking at pursuing that, nor would we necessarily want that to happen. But we understand that things redevelop and change, so it could be a possibility in the future. Um, another question that I would have is, I know there's been some discussion um, through a recent article I was reading about potential uh, additional redevelopment areas. If there are ever redevelopment areas in the future, would these signs apply or is it just going to be specifically to the Heritage District? Uh, Chair Hudgen, so this is, as it comes before you, specific to the Heritage uh, District only in um, one specific zoning district, which is HBC, um, which is specific to this area. So that is the only area that is being brought for you right now. Um, like projecting signs that are in the downtown, those are now permitted in commercial districts and also in the um, Gateway Village Center District. So that was an amendment that took place not too long ago. Um, so that's something that could possibly happen in the future, kind of um, similar to Commissioner Shaka's question of, Yes, it could technically expand in the future, but right now it only applies to the Heritage dis District in this one zoning district. Um, commissioners, is there any other questions or comments this time? Thank you, staff. All right, thank you. Um, we have, So far, I currently have um, members of the public willing to speak. Um, I have three that are opposed that do not wish to speak that will be turning their time over to another speaker. Um, and then we have two additional ones that are opposed to this item that wish to speak. And then we have a, another one that is opposed to speak, uh, is opposed to this item but does not wish to speak. So total we have five, six individuals that are opposed to this, one not speaking. And then we have one in favor um, that does wish to speak. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with Doralise. If you want to come forward for those three, um, Doralise, I'll give you 10 minutes to speak uh, on behalf of yourself and those other individuals. I'm also going to note that we do have two more that are opposed that do not wish to speak. You can proceed, Doralise. Good evening, Chair Higgins, Vice Chair Hamilton, and Commissioners. I'm here to speak against the rooftop signs. And I'd like to say currently, the Heritage District is allowed a variety of different signs. They have. Um, projecting signs. You have a variety of different signs that are allowed in the Heritage District. I'd like to talk about small town Phil. And when I saw the projection of Seattle and Portland, Oregon, as I was reading staff report and I looked at the um, cities that they referenced in regards to the rooftop signs, I noted that Portland, Oregon is 4.2, Two five million people. Los Angeles, four million. Phoenix, one point six million. Seattle, over seven hundred thousand. Gilbert, over two hundred two hundred fifty ish thousand. Chandler, two fifty. Tempe, one eighty five. Inglewood, one ten. Flagstaff. As I researched it, I did not. Portland does not allow rooftop signs. Los Angeles only allows it if it's framed by a higher building that does not break the skyline and when viewed at a distance of 500 feet from any public street. Phoenix says yes to rooftop signs in certain areas, the Jackson Street. Seattle prohibits rooftop signs, and they say the intent of the exception shall not be granted for rooftop roof signs or signs prohibited in the, in the section 23.55003. Chandler also prohibits signs on the roof, and they state projects and improve, improves 
the aesthetic beauty of the city's built environment by eliminating aesthetic blight and reducing visual clutter. They do not allow it. Tempe does not allow rooftop signs. Inglewood, California does not allow rooftop signs. Flagstaff allows it only when there are no walls to accommodate a building sign. So I asked staff the question, which cities have you researched that allow rooftop signs? Because Gilbert, through all these surveys, through all the research, through all the community outreach, they want the small town fill. This isn't a small town fill. A rooftop sign is not a small town fill. There's a reason why it's not allowed. It's because of skyline clutter, visual clutter. That's the reason why it's not allowed. The Heritage District guidelines are not completed to date, and that's why we postponed this, or the commissioners postponed it. And to date, there are no guidelines. There has been no community outreach with the exception of one meeting which happened on January 31st, 2019. And at that time, Amanda said, we're having this we're going to do the design guidelines, but we can't show it to you. We can't show you the text. We can't show you what's in it because we're waiting for illustrations. To date, we're still waiting. However, I did receive information yesterday because from a Freedom of Information Act. And my question, because they are, have the inspiration from Bethesda, Watertown, Massachusetts, and Boston, that they're an inspiration. So my question to the Redevelopment Commission and planning is do they allow rooftop signs? I didn't have time, I started to research, but I did not see anything that allowed a rooftop sign. So my guess would be no, but I would like the staff to um, give their opinion on it. I'd like to talk about the neighborhood. Lacey Track was built in, or established in 1917. Gilbert was founded in 1920. The water tower was erected in 1927. The residential property owners have enjoyed the skyline for over 100 years visu without visual skyline clutter and visual blight. Whether it's one sign, whether it's three signs, whether it's a hundred signs, it's still sign clutter. It's still visual blight. A 200 square foot sign will be held up by something. And the zoning laws require all mechanical equipment to be screened. This will not be screened. It has to be held by something. I've been told that the buildings will vi limit the view of the water tower. How is a rooftop sign enhancing vis the visitor's experience, the pedestrian visitor's experience, the bike riders? They won't even be able to see the rooftop sign. Who are we trying to uh, uh, advertise to? I'm not sure. However, the residents will be viewing that sign 24 hours a day. When they wake up in the morning, they will see the visual blight. When they go to bed at night, they will be lit up, and it will be lit up with visual clutter. The zoning regulations in Gilbert re require about the mechanical equipment. We talked about why. Why can't we, why can't we regulate um, the content? Well, it's a good, good question, because a Supreme Court decision, Reed versus the town of Gilbert, the town did not apply the sign code in a consistent manner, which violated the First Amendment freedom of speech. Gilbert is known throughout the United States as the town that changed the landscape in zoning laws relating to signage. I believe that the current rooftop sign amendment is not being applied consistently. Residents in the Gilbert Heritage District do not have the same right as other property owners in Gilbert. Why? Why is that? It is, according to the, um, it is according to the Town of Gilbert's Annual Action Plan of 2019, two census tracts in the Heritage District contains the largest number of low to moderate income residents. And I say that those residents need a voice too. 
And when I moved into the Heritage District, I did not give up my rights. I did not give my rights up, and nor did the residents who were purchasing their property in the Heritage District. Year after year, 2008 and 2018, the redevelopment plan clearly states the small town feel, and it does not state anything about rooftop signs. The rooftop signs also interfere with the astronomical observations. I feel that the town is introducing sign blight and visual blight in a designated slum and, and blighted area. All residents in the Heritage District should enjoy the same rights a clutter-free skyline as other property and residents in Gilbert. It should be throughout. The business owner at 313 North Gilbert Road should not be able to take away property rights of residential property owners in the Heritage District. We need to work with each other and not against. The owner does not have more rights than any other property owner right, any business in the Heritage District. The three property um, owner rights should not supersede other people's rights. And I believe that the town are, is taking the rights away from the residents, the homeowners, the residential property owners, to benefit three businesses. I believe that the sign code favors three businesses and does not favor others. That was in the um, Reed versus the Supreme Court. Reed versus the town of Gilbert. It's interesting reading. It really will, and I believe, uh, affect what we do here in Gilbert, and it has a, a tremendous effect, because if you can't control content, it can say anything they want it to say, and you cannot allow it. It would be against their rights once again. When the business owner purchased the property at the time, if we could talk the, about property rights, they knew what the laws were when they purchased the property. When they built the property, they knew what the laws were. It's not about their property rights. They already, they knew what was coming. I talked to some people, they say, what's a business district? One minute. Okay. So, downtown has existed for 99 years, Gilbert, without rooftop signs. It can exist 99 more years without rooftop signs. Gilbert is known throughout the United States for Reed versus the town of Gilbert. Many towns had to rewrite their sign codes. We, not, we must not put Gilbert on the map by placing rooftop signs in the Heritage District. Gilbert was known as the Hay Capital of the World. I do not want it to be known as a sign clutter capital of the world. I ask you not to support this tax amendment. I ask you or to postpone it until the design guidelines are completed and stakeholders have a chance to respond. And I appreciate your time and your service. Thank you. Thank you. Point of information to our town attorney. Um, does the proposed um, uh, plan in any way infringe on property rights of residential owners? Chairman Hutchins, I, I do not believe so, not legally. Um, some property owners may not like the look, but I don't think there is a legal right to have an unobstructed view unless there's some type of air easement in place for them. Okay, thank you. Next, we have Sandra Reynolds. Hi, I'm a resident of Gilbert, and I appreciate the chance to talk to you here tonight. I'm a little nervous. I don't usually talk in front of a bunch of people, so um, forgive me if I fumble about. Uh, I was at all of the public meetings for the redevelopment of the Heritage District and at the stakeholder meetings, and at all of those meetings, it was made very clear that a small town look and feel was wanted in the Heritage District. And it seems like the development that's going in now is in exact opposition to that. Huge buildings, they want to make even higher than the existing buildings that will block the water tower views. 
uh, and now we're talking about rooftop signs on top of that. Um, the people who live there may not legally be losing their property, but they are losing property values. I can look out my window and see the beautiful water tower with all the lights shining and stuff. If we have neon signs, I'm gonna be looking out my window seeing neon signs instead of the water tower. The focus is no longer gonna be on what our iconic heritage district theme is. It's being lost one, one step at a time. Uh, I think that planners need to start taking steps to limit the development in the heritage district so it stays a small town look and feel like the southern part of the district still looks. I think they need to reduce building heights, come up with designs in alignment with the small town look and feel, not an industrial marketplace that seems to be the progression and definitely that signs take. Um, you don't see signs in small towns on the rooftops. That's something that goes into commercial centers, uh, industrial centers, huge towns, huge cities, not a small town feel. Um, I think it's important that we get a grasp of what a small town should look like. And just as a side note, I noticed the other night as I was watching the Gilmore Girls, A Day in a Life on Netflix, they have an ideal setting of the small town. So if anyone needs a little refreshment on what small town means, take a look at that. Um, and I think we really need to strive to keep that look and feel in our heritage district. Our heritage is not an industrial center. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Next, um, Brad, if you'd like to come forward. Um, I, just to be fair to your side as well, I'm gonna give you 10 minutes too. Hello, my name is Brad Smith. I reside in the Agritopia neighborhood and have been a Gilbert resident for 19 years. All my children have graduated from Gilbert High Schools, two of which work in the Heritage District and also own homes in Gilbert. Gilbert is our family's town. I am the owner of the three-story building located at 313 North Gilbert Road, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm not a commercial developer. This building houses my software company, a local restaurant, a soon to open rooftop restaurant, and a co-working space serving women in the Gilbert community. My software company does business with other businesses throughout the US and Canada, and is not a public facing company, so I have no need of advertising my own business to this community. My objective in requesting a sign that at this current time would say the word Gilbert on top of our building is to help promote the town I love. The sign would be such that it represents the town and its historic preservation through creative art and culture. I too love the water tower and see this an addition, as an addition to our growing community. When the water tower was presented to the town in 1925, it was approved by a vote of 38 to five. Can you imagine today that there were five residents in opposition of the iconic water tower? In 2014, our town started adding the addition of lights to the water tower. So much so that those parties interested in lighting the Gilbert Water Tower a specific color to recognize a com community impacting initiative or create community awareness that you can make an application to do so. My point is this, our town will always be evolving in ways to celebrate who we are and I see this as an, another addition to celebration. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Um, are there any other public comments at this time before I proceed? Mr. Chairman, I do not have any other cards. Seeing none, um, I would like to open it up to the commission um, to discuss uh, or entertain a motion. I enjoyed uh, both hearing both sides of, of the argument, and I'd have to admit uh, personally there there's a lot of downtown communities in Arizona that are very 
was the right word, jealous of the, the signs and the sense of arrival that the town of Gilbert uh, exudes. Um, and, and I appreciate the fact that you know, our goal is to keep it a, a small town feel. I guess parking garages are not small towns. There's, there's, there's several of them. And, and so I guess as we do evolve, as Brad mentioned, uh, so too does the, the look and feel evolve. And so you know, it's, it's nice to have our cake and eat it too. And I think in some ways, the town of Gilbert has that. We have a small town feel, and yet we can, it, it's exciting to see the, the dynamics um, in, in, in Gilbert. So um, I see both sides, but the 38 to five vote in 1925 for the erection of the water tower, who knows, there might have been even more people that were opposed, but ultimately voted yes. So uh, they never probably imagined that it'd be lit up today too. So times change and so does the, the fabric and look and feel. So um, just make those comments. Comments? Hey. I'm actually impressed with the compromise. I think staff, it appears to me that staff is it's kind of a carefully crafted compromise. It seems to me that three signs on Gilbert Road, on certain buildings, in certain areas, um, that to me is indicative of consideration of concerns and comments and not necessarily the eschewing of those. So I'm actually inclined to support a what I consider to be a pretty carefully crafted and analysis that appears to be done to kind of take into account all concerns. So I, positive step. Additional items for discussion with this? Um, if that there's none, I would entertain a motion. I'll move to recommend approval of the Planning Commission for Z19-04 LDC Text Amendment Heritage Sign Panel. As those in, uh, do we have a second? I'll second that motion. Having a second, those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? opposed? One opposed? Okay. With that, we have a passage of this with one opposed. At this time, I will now close the public hearing on item number two. We will move into communications. Um, communications from chair, none at this time. Our council liaison? None right now. Um, do we have a report from our commissioners? Seeing none, and do we have a report from our staff liaison? Mr. Chairman, I do not have a report at this time. Okay, having none, we now adjourn our meeting. <laughs>